Okay, why don't we get started? <clears throat> Again, my name is uh, Todd Stoffer from Exida. I am standing in for uh, Dr. Bill Goble, who is actually traveling right now. I am Exida's Director of Alarm Management Services and also lead up our marketing department. So I am involved with the uh, CFSC program. Um, As uh, a little background information about Exida, we are a global company with folks around the world to support our, our customers um, in all different countries, um, particularly when it comes to training and education, which is a key part of what we're going to be talking about today. We offer a variety of products and services consulting services that help customers understand the processes that they need to go through or to conform to the processes that are identified in the standards. We also have engineering tools to help people comply with the um, functional safety standards, for example, <coughs> involved in product certification. And then last but not least, we have a lot of activities that are involved with people, education of people, training, resource materials, reference materials, and last but not least, professional certification, which is the topic of today's discussion. We do have <clears throat> many reference books that we've written in the area of functional safety. Um, <clears throat> much of this is what we draw from as part of our educational material associated with the personal safety certification program and also in terms of creation of the questions that help demonstrate the competency. So let's talk a little bit about personal safety certification and why it's important and what's behind it. Certainly there's increasing pressure amongst folks to better design and operate their plants from a safety point of view and from an economic point of view, driven by new plants in new areas of the world or in, or in uh, areas of the world that have previously not had uh, facilities such as this, uh, greenfield facilities, greenfield plants, as well as a drive in established areas in existing plants to maximize productivity and get the most out of what the plant can do. And this tends to have people pushing their operation to the limit, which means that having a well-designed safety system is all the more important when you are truly trying to optimize your performance. Now, personnel safety, personnel functional safety certification is made important be, partly because of the changes in the workforce demographics that have gone on within the last five to ten years. Certainly in North America and Europe, there's been a transition out of the workforce of operators and engineers, and we need to backfill and educate the, the younger engineers so that they can fill the positions of the senior knowledgeable folks that are leaving the workforce. Functional safety standards have continued to evolve. Certainly 61508 came out with a new version in 2010, for example, <clears throat> and the evolution of functional safety standards has led to more countries and companies adopting them and looking at them to make sure that their employees and the people that they do business with are complying with those standards. And last but not least, there are significant new challenges from technology, such as the drive to integrate um, basic process control systems and safety instrumented systems in, in a single common um, system, <clears throat> as well as the, the threat that cybersecurity hackers and uh, viruses and things like Stuxnet now pose to automation systems or industrial control systems. So this has all made the need for knowledge and education and um, personnel 
enhancement uh, more important? Let's take a look at um, the role that people play in preventing process safety accidents. They play a significant role. Several studies done by the uh, HSE in the UK spelled this out. One study showed that um, the majority or the major area that led to accidents was errors that occurred in the specification phase of the safety instrumented system life cycle. Another study um, in the chemical sector identified some of the specific areas where uh, mistakes had been made, many related to the way we design and operate our plants from the human factors point of view. In um, studies that have been done and, and books that have been written, written by Trevor Kletz, he's done significant research and documentation into process safety accidents over years and years and years. And the common conclusion that he has come to is um, all accidents are traceable in some way, shape, or form to human error. So this human element of engineering is really, really significant. And that's one of the main purposes of creating a personnel functional safety certification program to help people enhance their skills in these areas and to allow them to demonstrate their competence so that we can reduce the chances of these human errors that can lead to significant process safety accidents. <clears throat> now the IEC 61511 standard and the functional safety standards in general talk about different types of design, reliability, focused on systematic faults, systematic failures, as well as random failures. Now, a lot of the, the tools that exist in the world for safety system design relate to analyzing random failure analysis of components and incorporating that effectively into system design. One of the other studies that was done by the HSC looked at a whole bunch of accidents that had occurred and looked at each one in the cause and determined whether it was from a random failure or a systematic failure, meaning from a human error. And the study found that uh, only 15% of the accidents had actually been caused by random failures and that 85% were due to systematic faults. Again, this is the, the idea of human errors creeping into process safety design. So we can design the and create designs for the, the most reliable hardware, but if it's not applied correctly, um, we can still end up with, with problems and issues. And that's what safety certification, functional safety certification programs are for. Now the functional safety life cycle defined in the IEC 61511 standard describes all the tasks that need to be performed to comply with the standard. Um, by executing these tasks appropriately that helps to eliminate or minimize the potential of systematic failure. So one of the things that you could think about the, the life cycle as, as representing is the ideal work process that folks should go through to minimize the chance of making human errors or human mistakes. Um, and the discussion of how that is done is documented in your functional safety management plan which is a portion of the functional safety life cycle. In that functional safety management plan, in addition to describing the individual activities that go on to support the safety life cycle, <clears throat> a key part of that document is also describing or defining the, the various roles and responsibilities for all the people that are involved in those tasks and defining the, the competency requirements, the training that folks need to have to be able to support 
their assigned tasks. And this idea of training and being knowledgeable about the functional safety life cycle task is not just a good idea, it's actually required by the standards. Both the 61508 and 61511 standard both contain language that dictates that people that are performing these tasks need to be trained and competent to, to execute them properly. And it's all our responsibility to make sure that that, that happens which is one of the key reasons for the creation of a safety certification program for people to help them, number one, get the training and experience that they need, and number two, to help demonstrate that they have the experience and skills to meet these competency requirements in the standard. How else would one determine whether someone is competent or not? Competency can be in the eye of the beholder unless you have a standard program such as what we're going to talk about today where people are tested against a body of knowledge representing the standards to assure that they have an appropriate level of expertise. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you an example of how one customer had included or defined the roles and responsibilities and necessary skill sets in their functional safety management plan based on their task, in this case it has up. They had identified for two different levels of personnel, uh, an entry level person, for example, and a senior person, what uh, background and requirements they had as well as their typical um, tasks that they would be worked on, that they would work on or be expected to work on. Here's another example, and you can see that one of the easy ways to specify or ask for competency is to see whether a person has uh, a certification. In this case, from the CFSC program, um, at the CFSC or CFSP level, we'll talk about what those two mean. So it's a quick and easy way to, to specify or to ask for uh, a certain level of competence. And someone who has achieved those certifications has demonstrated a specific level of competence. So it's the benefit of the certification program. One of the key ones is that it helps companies know who is certified and who is not, and gives them a basis for um, determining roles and responsibilities. Now, personnel functional safety certification programs have been around a while, since um, 2000 was when the CFSC program was first launched as a collaboration between Exida and TV. It was then uh, turned into a, a nonprofit. Um, the CFSC Governance Board was created in 2002. Other programs have been introduced over the last um, eight to ten years as well. Another one from TUV in 2004, ISA launched one here in the U.S. in 2008, and TUV uh, sued as well in 2008. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the similarities and differences between these programs. Um, I'm talking about them all as certification programs, but in reality, they are not all considered certification programs. For example, the ISA program is a certificate program, which is different. And we'll talk about what those differences are a little bit later. Now, the CFSC program has four different um, domains that it addresses today. First is process safety, second is machine safety, and then these are for practitioners, users, essentially, engineers. And then there's um, two skill sets that are designed to address uh, product developers for both hardware and software. So the CFSC program today addresses those four different knowledge domains 
and certification is available in each four of those specialties. Now, having a functional safety certification program and getting certification has significant benefits to, to companies, as we saw a little bit earlier. It's, it's a way to provide proof of competence uh, and to quickly and easily weed out what, what people are qualified for certain roles. One company that we know of as a means of building a safety culture within the company encouraged their engineers to all get CFSC certification with the idea that when they when they achieved that they would all receive a thousand dollar bonus so obviously that company took it very important um, took it very critically that um, folks should focus on that um, task and rewarded them as such which was a, a great way to help make sure that functional safety was considered important within the company for individuals it can help increase your functional safety skills because remember potentially there is a educational element to certification there's education and then there's demonstration of competence one can demonstrate competence without education but for most people there's an educational element that helps them be prepared so that they're able to demonstrate competence so that helps them acquire new skills so that they can do new things within the company, become more valuable employees to their company. So the CFSE program then, as I mentioned, was is the first one that was, was launched on the market in 2000. We consider it the, uh, the global standard, the golden standard. It's the most recognized program around the world. Uh, it is it comes in two different flavors, as we'll see shortly, CFSE and CFSP, E being for expert and P being for practitioner, expert being the, the most difficult and most challenging certification to get, which includes an exam uh, where one needs to demonstrate your knowledge and expertise in functional safety. And the exam definitely is not easy. You need to truly be a, an expert in the functional safety field to pass that. And if you think about if you're a company or you're an end user and you want a true expert to be working on your project, then having a program that helps identify the true experts in functional safety is what you want. And that's what the CFSE program really, really represents. And that's why we consider it the, the gold standard. Now, as I mentioned, it comes in a, a two different flavors um, today. CFSP, P for practitioner, is kind of the, the first level certification that requires less, less expertise, less, less knowledge, less experience. And the, the higher level expertise, CFSE, um, the expert certification, definitely requires significant demonstration of expertise as well as uh, pretty extensive uh, experience in the functional safety field. Now, I'm excited to introduce a couple of new programs that the CFSE program or the CFSE governance board is rolling out. First is one that we'll call a merit badge program, similar to the, the Boy Scouts of America, <clears throat> where we will soon be offering electives in specific topical areas related to functional safety that will allow users to, again, enhance their knowledge in specific areas, such as SIL verification or SIL selection or alarm management, or cybersecurity, and to demonstrate that they've achieved a certain level of competence there. So it's something that supplements their CFSC or CFSP general certification. In addition, just like what the CFSC program and, and the others on the market have provided for functional safety over the last 10 years, with the importance of cybersecurity, we see a need for a similar or comparable certification program. So we're announcing the, the formation of the Industrial Control System Security Expert Program. 
Similar to the CFSC program, this is for demonstration of, of expertise to be to be recognized as a true um, cybersecurity expert for industrial control systems. And we'll talk about what this means uh, in a little bit. Let me just check that make sure everybody's uh, okay. Looks like I see all green lights, so that's good. Um, so let's talk about the CFSC, CFSP program, the entry level program within CFSC. It has um, less experience requirements than CFSC, about two years um, of experience or education. The exam is uh, single part, multiple choice, um, not near as challenging as the CFSC exam, uh, but one that folks can real, realistically pass with some preparation, some training, some general knowledge, and um, study beforehand. Now, all of the certifications require uh, a renewal <clears throat> every three years to make sure that you are continuing in the functional safety field and continuing your work there. Um, so now let's take a look at the CFS E program. Technical difficulties, I apologize. Okay, CFS E program. Significantly more experience required. Uh, Ten years experience slash education, as well as a, an application that requires references and documentation of your SIS or safety experiences. A couple of case studies where you describe some of the projects that you've worked on to show that you truly have the level of uh, experience that's expected for this certification. Now the exam is more challenging than the CFSP. It consists of two parts. The first part being uh, a multiple choice and the second part being a uh, word problem or a fill in the blanks uh, freeform um, exam. And again, this also has a, a three year renewal period. Now the badge program that I mentioned earlier, again, is specific topical areas that folks can choose to enhance their knowledge in and uh, then take part in an exam to be able to demonstrate their competence. And the areas that we've identified for offering initially in this Merit Badge program are topics such as process hazard analysis, SRS requirements, proof test planning, alarm, and uh, so these are specific tasks or stages in the functional safety life cycle. We've also identified areas that um, now come from other disciplines that touch functional safety or impact functional safety, such as alarm management for folks that take credit for alarms as an independent protection layer. There's a whole discipline of alarm management that comes into play. And as we mentioned, cybersecurity, certainly the um, using secure practices to um, design your network will help make sure that the risk reduction that you've expected in the design of your safety instrument and system is delivered. Cybersecurity, if you don't pay attention to cybersecurity, can certainly impact the ability of the SIS to operate as it's expected. So that's why those two merit badges have been added. Now, I also mentioned earlier that we're adding a totally new certification program, and this is for cybersecurity, the Industrial Control System Security Expert Program, which, similar to other certifications in security, is based on testing your knowledge in specific security domains that are described here. Um, one of the key things about this certification is it's designed to take the best of the, the IT world 
and make sure that those security practices are applied appropriately within the industrial control system world. Most security certifications that exist are for pure I, from a, are created from a pure IT standpoint. So they don't necessarily apply very well or translate very well to people that need to work with industrial control systems because the requirements are different. If one were to just blanketly apply standard IT security practices and protocols without understanding the uniqueness of industrial control systems, you'd probably shut down your plant. So this certification is designed to, to bridge that gap, to bring in both what we know from the IT world, but then also focus on the unique security considerations for industrial control systems. And it comes in, again in two different flavors, one that we'll call a, a practitioner. <clears throat> this is the, the person that's responsible for um, designing, maintaining, and administering the networks of their industrial control systems. And second, uh, one that's designed for folks that are developing products that they want to be secure for deployment in industrial control systems. Now this is a summary of what the, the training methodology or training program looks like. Um, we are offering preparation classes in these different domain areas um, grouped in, in logical sequences here with the idea that someone who wants to complete um, the ICSSE certification, these are all optional training programs, but at the end of the day, the test or the exam will check to make sure that they have the demonstrated expertise and knowledge in all of these areas. So one of the ways that folks can choose to enter this program is to kind of do a self-assessment and see which of these areas they think they're already up to speed on and which ones they need some additional training on. Now the, the first module, the Fundamentals of ICS and IT Security, doubles both as a module for the uh, Cybersecurity Expert Certification Program as well as the, the Merit Badge Program for Cybersecurity for folks that are CFSEs and CFSPs today. The difference being an additional module in the Merit Badge Program which focuses on security applications to safety instrumented systems. So this would be the, the class that an existing CFSE or CFSP might take to enhance their knowledge of cybersecurity and how it affects the design of safety instrumented systems with a subsequent exam to, to show that they've mastered those, those concepts. This is the similar layout for those that are in the developer track for the Security Expert Program. Now once you've completed the CFSE exam and have passed it and your certification has been approved, folks are, are given a certificate as well as their own unique logo um, that they can use on business cards and email signatures and things like that to help identify you as having achieved this significant accomplishment. Now we talked about the different programs that exist and that we are adding new. There's different types of exams for each one and this discussion of exams is important because that's where you demonstrate your competency and your knowledge and that's really what a certification process or program is about. It's um, demonstrate that you have the requisite level of experience and demonstrate your competence through passing of these different exams. And we have different types of exams again depending upon what skill set the person is or what area they're shooting for, whether it's practitioner in process industries or a software developer. We're also adding new exams now for the Merit Badge program and different exams for cybersecurity. And the majority of these exams are 
created to test your knowledge or expertise against a recognized international standard. <clears throat> That's another key element of a certification program, that the body of knowledge that you're being tested against is something that emanates from an industry-recognized uh, standard or guideline. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the CFSP exam is relatively straightforward, 50 multiple choice questions that you can take uh, reference material in. You need to get a, an 80% on the exam to pass and to achieve that certification. CFSE has, exam has two parts to it, the first part being a, a multiple choice exam, kind of like CFSP. The second part being more of a open um, question and answer discussion with uh, word problems and fill in the blank um, answers where you can truly demonstrate your, your knowledge and expertise of functional safety practices and principles. Now there are specific uh, scores that you need to get on each of those two tests to achieve the the passing grade as well as an overall passing grade of, of 80. Now we also, as I mentioned earlier, um, this, this idea of personnel functional safety certification has two elements to it. One is the education and building your knowledge and expertise and the second is the demonstration of that through the exams. Now to help people that want to build their expertise we have a lot of resources available. We have online training. We have books, some of the books that I saw I showed earlier. We have preparation classes, prep classes, optional prep classes. We have uh, study guides for the specific um, exams, all designed to help you gain the knowledge that you need uh, in order to demonstrate the, um, the required level of competence. Now I mentioned that the, there were a few safety certification programs on the market for personnel certification. One of the key differences between them is I've been generically referring to all these as certification programs. And as I alluded to earlier, there's actually a difference between a certification and certificate program. Certification, the primary goal is to demonstrate competence and that one has a certain level of experience. <clears throat> that can be done through the passing of an exam. No training course is necessarily required to demonstrate competence. One could have all the competence they need based on their industrial experience. So the CFSE program recognizes that and that's why training is optional and one can choose to just take the exam or study for the exam on their own uh, in order to attempt to demonstrate the competence. Some of these other programs that exist, such as ISA or the one from TUV, um, they actually require that you take the training class. That's a key part of the program. And then the certificate, or what you get afterwards, you get simply for taking the class, or in some cases you do need to take a test but the test is not necessarily designed to measure or demonstrate competence. It's just designed to show that you basically were at the class. Um, so that's a certificate program, which is different from certification. And the reason that this is important is because the rules for what you can call yourself depends whether you've gone through a certification or a certificate program. In different countries around the world, this is all treated differently. <clears throat> For example, in the U.S., there are certain um, credentials that you cannot use, you know, like the letters CFSP or CFSE. Um, in this case, they are a certification. They, are, they do come from a certification program so that there's no limitation on, on their use here in the U.S., but other programs, if they're not a true certification program, you may not be able to use those credentials next to your name. 
There's different countries around the U.S. or around the, around the world, Canada, uh, Brazil, etc., where they also regulate very tightly the use of the word engineer in any kind of certification or any kind of credentials. And if the credentials don't include a true certification program behind it, you are not allowed to use the word engineer in your credentials. So definitely something to think about before you pick a functional safety personnel certification program, thinking about uh, what country you're located in and what country you expect to do work in to make sure that whatever whatever program you decide to enter into that you can gain the recognition from it that you want after you've completed it. And on that note, I think I'll open it up to questions. There's more information on the, the training classes and resources that are available on the Exeda website. There's information about the exams, when they are being held and where they're being held on the CFSC website, as well as, generically speaking, additional information excuse me, about the CFSE and CFSP programs. So I'll turn over the floor to any questions that you might have. You can enter them into the uh, Q&A box. We'll wait a couple more minutes. Right now I don't, I don't see any. There's a question that just came in about uh, who hosts the exams. Um, for the CFSE program, the exams are held separately from the training program. Um, they are coordinated by the CFSE program. We have proctors that are brought in to handle them. Um, to address them. In some cases, it may be employees of Exida, it may be um, outside people, but it is one of the requirements of a certification program is that the people that take part in the proctoring of the exam and the grading of the exams must be different from the folks that um, teach the prep classes and we certainly have a separation when it comes to that. <clears throat> exams are um, kept confidential and are, the names are disguised and are given to various folks to grade um, without knowledge of who that person is. So we maintain uh, anonymity and uh, integrity that way. Let's see, we have some other questions. One question is, do regulators in various countries prescribe whether CFSC or other certifications are needed to operate in a certain processing environment? That's a good question. I don't know that I have seen any regulators prescribe that. <clears throat> I certainly see the request for certifications such as CFSC in uh, bids from customers. Uh, for work for engineering contractors, for example, that they expect a certain level of knowledge and expertise embodied by this certification. But I have not, as of yet, know of any examples where a certification or where a regulatory agency has prescribed a specific um, assessment. How many, and then there's another question, how many folks hold these four levels of certification now? 
there is approximately between 700 and 800 CFSE, CFSPs. The last time I looked, it's relatively evenly split, 50-50, 50%-50%. Um, but in the, the current mode that we're in now, um, more people are getting the CFSPs than the CFSEs. Uh, many people are starting by getting the CFSP when they have a few years experience and then later on once they've added additional experience go for the CFSE and then uh, attempt to get that certification. I see another question here. There's a question that says, the TUV program states Certified Functional Safety Engineer. Yes, that's the designation of the highest level certification, I believe, within the TUV program. And the comment is that this person has gone through online training to prepare for the TUV certification in the TUV classroom, and online trainings were similar and following up asking about um, the difference be between what I said, a, a certification versus a certificate. Um, yet TUV actually, to the letter of the law, would be considered a certificate program because my understanding is that the training class is required as part of the program. Um, one cannot achieve the functional Certified Functional Safety Engineer designation without taking the training. And that violates one of the, the pretenses of being a certification program. And there's actually international standards for companies that provide certification programs. And that's one of the key things, one of the key requirements in that standard is whether um, folks are required to take that uh, associated training class or not as part of the certification. Any other questions? There's another question from an end user perspective. Does CFSP cover the practical aspects of day-to-day -day involvement while the CFSE provides more of a theoretical background? I would say that that is probably a true statement. Um, although CFSC has a theoretical element to it, but it also has an element of demonstrating a higher level of expertise the preparation classes are the, the same material, the same concepts are examined in the, the tests. It's just it's a much more in-depth uh, probing of the knowledge base for the uh, CFSC exam. And there's actually some, some good on the CFSE website, CFS, www.cfse.org, there's some good descriptions of what um, the, the expected skill set or roles and responsibilities are for a CFSP versus CFSE. CFSP, for example, being someone that supports functional safety tasks, CFSE being one that leads them and reviews other others' work. So that's another way of looking at the, the differences in what they're trying to represent. Any other questions? Some very excellent questions here. Well, if there's not, then I will say thank you very much for attending. We hope you can join us at our next webinar. Um, 
this presentation and the recording will be posted on our uh, Exeter web recorded webinars area. And I encourage you to, to check out the, uh, the websites that I, that I mentioned. And feel free to, to drop me a line, drop me an email if you have any follow-up questions. I can be reached at T Stauffer, so that's T S T A U F F E R at Exida E X I D A dot com if you have any follow up questions or things that you would like to discuss related to this program. And thank you again for uh, for tuning in and we hope you can join us at a future session.